Good morning. Perhaps the predominant experience of these three or four months of lockdown, especially for those of us who have been in the at-risk categories, has been a sense of overwhelming isolation and loneliness. The latest easing of restrictions may go some way towards improving all of that, as people can now meet those from other households or form these so-called bubbles. But despite the opening now of places like shops, restaurants, cinemas, and of course, churches, for all of us, the painful reality of being cut off from normal sources of support, friendship networks and structures will be, I think, one of the embedded memories of this COVID-19 era. And as such, the emotions of loss, distance, and detachment are in fact very similar to those that are being expressed in our psalm this morning, Psalm 61. Before we read it though, let's pray. Lord, we come to you from a wide range of backgrounds, contexts, and experiences. Right now, some of us feel far away, distant, and you seem absent. For others, the reality that you are with us is actually strong and obvious. So wherever we are and whoever we are, take us into the security of your presence and by your spirit draw near, break down those barriers of distance or coldness, we ask, so that we might recover our confidence in you, the one to whom alone we can turn for lasting strength and help. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reading then, Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years, for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then I will ever sing in praise of your name and fulfill my vows day after day. If this psalm, as seems likely, was written either during or after Israel's terrifying experience of exile from Jerusalem, we can see why it begins with the cry of a person who calls out to God from the ends of the earth, tired, hungry, lost, lonely, all normal support structures and relational networks have gone. So what is the man or woman of faith to do? Well, number one, pray. But also to remember the past experiences when God came through. For as the psalmist says here, you have been my refuge, Lord, a strong tower against the foe. The tower just mentioned there was the place inside ancient city walls where you would go for safety if the defences had been breached. A secret chamber in which to run, a hidden passage where you could wait for the battle to finish. The rock was the craggy outcrop on the mountainside where you might hide and ride out the storm. Lead me, says the songwriter, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That, that picture of people climbing to safety was seen dramatically on our TV screens just before lockdown. It may be now difficult to remember it, but before the pandemic in March, the UK was battered by the rains and storms of February. And the rising flood waters forced people to clamber on top of abandoned cars, perch on top of house roofs, and cling to the branch of a tree for dear life. This is God to his people, the rock 
the shelter, the refuge, the tower, and also the tent. I long to dwell in your tent, that is, in God's house, forever. A tower may be temporary. The tent of God is permanent. Do you see how all these images are designed to build confidence and assurance into the person who trusts in God? The God who is everywhere and always with them. More than that, they offer real hope for the future. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. In other words, there will be a family of faith to which we can belong after the pandemic is over and the storm blows through. There will be a legacy, an inheritance of those who have clung on, on to God, who have made him their refuge. They will return to the promised land post-exile, post-COVID, and the Lord will lead his people. Increase the days of the king's life. That prayer in the psalm for the king to live long and prosper, which appears in the middle of the psalm, would have been a very real need in a society which had been dislocated and divided by long exile. It reminds us to pray for those who lead us nationally and spiritually. We cannot be a nation or a community of faith, a church, without our leaders. But above all, we cannot be the people of God without our own personal faithfulness to God. That's how the psalm ends. And if, as I suspect, this is one of those psalms used in Israel's public worship, then the reference to promises made and kept in tough times is very relevant to us. The psalm concludes, Then I will ever sing in praise of your name and fulfill my vows day after day. All those commitments to God which I have made, I want to keep. I want to be as faithful to God as he has been to me. I am bound as a believer by my vows to God. My relationship to him is committed. It's not casual. So I'm not going to bottle it now. In the storm, I will trust him. Day after day, I will renew my promises to him. One of the most moving experiences for me was to see during our live Zoom communion, people expressing their worship to God on screen, singing in praise of the God who is faithful, fulfilling their own vows to that God as they took bread and wine together. Well, let's pray. Lord, keep us faithful to you, faithful to our commitments to you. Right now, as the storms of uncertainty continue and little in life seems secure, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Be with those who have acutely and painfully experienced the isolation and the loss of support structures. May they find you their refuge, tower and tent. Draw near to them as to all of us by the presence of your Holy Spirit. Speak grace over our lives and protect each one of us under the shelter of your wings. Amen.